All right, so we've made it into the world again. The world is a much larger place when every wall is a floor. So now we have to get up to where the level two door is. It's not too difficult, really. After all, that was quite a big hint that they just gave us where we can walk on every wall now, which is turned into a floor. Walking up on the roof. Now, I'm pretty sure we can also do the third chapter if we so choose and miss the second one, but what's the fun in that? You do learn different aspects of the game as well, so it is important just to always do everything in a chronological order. So we're up to the vortex. Now, as I said, this does introduce some new aspects to the game. Predominantly, this time, the vortex. Now, this to me, the first time was a complete clusterfuck. I had no idea what to do. And it does get quite confusing. It's very important to always test out what the new things do. So if you get stuck like so, the game won't tell you that you failed. It'll just tell you to press and hold space, which is nice. It'll tell you to rewind. You have no idea what you've done so we can rewind there's also hints and tips but that's cheating and again some of you guys that uh, would want this game probably shouldn't be watching my walkthrough of it <laughs> which is spoils the game immensely but it does have a rather expensive entry point to the game really it costs uh, I think it was $15 it's quite expensive now this is a really finicky mission because you guys start slipping, but you got to move the world so the key falls down into that little alcove, and it's done so just now. Now that now it's going to just be pretty simple because what we would have could have done is the key could have fallen into the vortex, and we would have not have gotten it back. Instead, now we've just got to move the world like so, make it completely immune to the vortex. That's a mission one complete. Five more to go. The precipice. I'd love to know how long just the art would take to make the game. It looks really, really good. Very simple, especially how the way we spawn. It's quite creative. Now the precipice. What they're talking about the precipice is clearly this diving board here <laughs> that we can fall off. But I'm not idiotic enough to go there. To get trapped in this vortex and it magically stops after like a couple of seconds. Any moment now, there we go. We've got the key. So we've got to go through this vortex and we've got to go rather quickly down. And that was way too steep. And as you can see, that's why it's called the vortex. Gotta change the angle so it's a bit more at least manageable, like so. And now we can walk through. So you have to find the perfect angle so you don't go falling off the precipice, but you're not stuck in the vortex itself. Okay, the lion. Now this has a menace, but we also have a button to turn the vortex off. So, what we've got to do is spin the game world around. And we've got to keep falling off there we go, until we reach the vortex. And now, what's pretty much the case is we're right in the middle of the map. We can't fall because, after all, we're stuck in the vortex. We're going to move the world around with the menace until it hits that button. And then we pretty much stop moving the world and all we've got to do is just walk in level four the pillars now there's a lot of walking around in here and it does get quite confusing because of all the different angles all the different uh well poles and directions that you can walk in okay so there's a key, a button, and a vortex this time. So what we'll do first of all is, let's think. I'll keep walking. 
down here. Of course, there's no fall damage, which is quite important at the end of the day. Now, the key... Um, the key, it doesn't get affected... Well, it does get affected by gravity, sorry. And what I'd like to do is just to move the key into the wormhole, or the vortex, sorry. Like so. And that means I've got to go back to that button which will get rid of the vortex and will drop the key right back down to us. How handy is that? Okay, so now the door's open. We're just going to figure out a way to get to the door. It shouldn't be too hard. Okay, and we're there. The mausoleum. Got another menace. It looks like we're sort of in, I don't know, some Assassin's Creed type of building. So the damned mausoleum, we have a menace and a button. Both will be proving in to be quite handy. At least the menace is gonna be a bit of a problem, but let's go press the button first up, see what it does. Clearly it gets rid of the vortex and it opens up the door so we'll be able to go through there. I've got to get rid of that menace and we can't jump over it. So the second or outer circle will be very, very handy. Oh, and that was way too fast. I've got to slow the descent of the menace down. So it does go into the outer circle. Perfect. Now, if I kept on spinning the world around like this, that would cause the menace to come back up. We don't want that, so we have to move the world around to the left hand side it just makes it a heck of a lot easier at the moment all it really is is just a matter of time until we get to the vortex okay now let's get a good run up and we want to spin the world around to the left once more so we just drop straight down into that vortex and now we're stuck we're not going to be moving anywhere and uh, all that there is to do is to move the actual ball menace onto the button and we're done it wasn't very challenging at all done now the last mission of Chapter 6, or Chapter 2, sorry, The Memorial. Okay, quite the challenge this one, as you'd expect from the very last one. Let's start spinning the world around. So we'll get the menace onto the button, which will get rid of that vortex. And of course, because gravity is going to pull us down any minute, uh, we want to get down to that log. So let's keep moving the world around. Sharp right. We've managed to land on the log. Perfect. So the next challenge at the moment is to get to that key. It's not too bad. Let's run up right to that statue and just hug it. Leave it there. Just move the world around ever so slowly. So the menace falls off the button. Go, which enables us to get the vortex and it'll get caught in that vortex. Beautiful. Let's keep moving the world around. So we walk on this person's face. The poor person's face. Keep moving it. And fall right down. Now we can't get the key because gravity is pulling it down, but there's a way which we can flip it back. By going back on the button. Beautiful. So we've got that all done and dusted. Now this is where the challenging bit lies. I can't remember exactly how to do this, so let's see if we can do this uh, rather well. Of 
from memory, I've got to get the menace onto the person's face. Okay, I see what we've got to do. Oh, oh, oh. no, we fell down way too sharply. So I want to spin the world around a bit. No, that's still too sharply. Beautiful. So we haven't hit the menace, and the vortex has caught us. We don't have anything to worry about now. So the only real thing that's going to be moving is the menace. Let's go get that onto the button. That'll stop the vortex and from us being caught in the middle of nowhere. We'll be able to just walk up, finish the mission. Chapter 2 has been completed. So it did go by pretty quickly, although these are the very first ones, and I do have them rather well memorized. Let's see what this bust wants to tell us. We're like children with a bottomless toy box, creating and exploring, limited only by our imaginations. We cast aside the theories of old and invent new ones beyond method or reason. Our own world. It definitely is tied in with the game developers, but until next time, hopefully you'll be looking forward to chapter three just as much as I am. And until next time, I'll see you all later.